Hi, I'm Mike Trout. I live here in the serene heartland of Zen for the last 19 years. And I've been working on a dream. And that dream has been educating the world via an autonomous agent called AI. The dream started back in 2000 when I was working as part of a startup called the Digital Arena. And I saw certification programming and I thought, you know, we could automate all this. When I moved to Japan, I started teaching and the Nintendo DS had come out and I thought to myself, the kids were all crazy about it. We could automate learning because I started playing the role of AI and um, acting as though I was the interface. When the iPhone came out, I was blown away. I was like, holy cow, this is amazing. Imagine a bigger version. I called it the, the, um, um, the teaching uh, touch tablet, the teaching touch tablet, right? Be a bigger version with cameras on it and the kid wouldn't need to write or read because I'm dyslexic and it would just interact with the AI and uh, it would push the games and everything else and it would control the education experience. I reached out to a friend of mine uh, in DC called Russell Clark and he was like, you know, my brother is an AI, you know, guru. He works at DARPA. His name was Chris, amazing guy. And he passed away with ALS in 2012. And I would talk to Chris and Chris was like, and, and he's like, I can't talk about my work. But so I could describe to you what it is I want and you could tell me whether it could do it or not. And I describe and he said, yeah, I could do that, I could do that. And, and, and then one day he emailed me and said, hey, Mike, there is a, there's AI that just came out called Siri. It's a $150 million AI and it could probably do everything you wanna do. So I'm reaching out to Siri, trying to get a conversation with them saying, hey, I'm, I'm an English teacher living in rural Japan, right? No access to capital networks, just with this crazy dream. And, uh, you know, um, and I was naive back then to think that companies like Google and Apple, which Google was don't be evil, was their motto, were the good. And I, and I thought that, you know, I was so enamored, as we all are with Steve Jobs, that if I showed him Siri operating on his iPhone, right, and how it would work with education, that he would reach out to me. Well, he did all right. Eight months after my videos demonstrating uh, Siri on the iPhone, he bought Siri, ending my, you know, dream of working and getting Siri to run the eSingularity platform. But I wasn't de de deterred, right? I pivoted and reached out to the XPRIZE. I was like, why don't we set up the eSingularity prize? I reached out to Peter Diamantris and he would tell me the board's not interested in education. I was blown away. And uh, so not de deterred, I said, you know what? I need to get my voice out there. Ted Global. I applied for Ted Global. I got accepted. $5,000. I didn't have it. I borrowed it from my father. And uh, he gave, you know, and, and I signed up. But I said, you know, if I'm going to go to Ted, I want to be sharing the dream. And now the good news. And you could read my talk below. It's linked. I had GPT correct it because it was dyslexic mangling, right? So it's, it reads a little smoother now. And uh, I said, you know, there was an application process to speak and you could get nominated. So I did the talk and saying, this is, this, is, this is just a nomination. I want you to go and nominate me to talk at TED. I got a cease and desist letter from Bruno. And not only that, I got kicked out. Now, actually, that was good because I didn't have the money to fly there. I forgot to ask my father to include $2,000 from my trip there. He'd given me 5,000, I actually needed seven. And I didn't know how I was gonna ask him. And that was really killing me, right? And I thought I was gonna lose it all because I was too embarrassed to tell him. Thank God Bruno kicked me out because I got that money back and I was able to pay my father back 
and you know, and uh, they weren't gonna let me talk anyway. I would pivot after that. I was annoyed at the whole startup because I believe that this idea, Eduit, was game changing. And I didn't have access to the closed capital networks. So I looked at the startup. And what I discovered is 99% of pre seed startups fail. 90%, they're the ones without accredited investors. 90% of the ones with accredited investors, they're called angel investors, fail. And even if those get involved, 70% are counted failures because they can't cross something called the chasm and, and reach early uh, um, uh, early majority adoption or late early early adoption. This is broken. So I came up with the idea of a decentralized open startup called a found up that would take an idea, help the founder develop a team, and it would all be AI driven. The same AI that I wanted for education, I thought I could use it for a startup. I couldn't get anyone to bite. And frustrated in 2011, I would turn to the founders of Bitcoin because I built the first Bitcoin blockchain diagram showing the uh, found up how it would work through on the blockchain with Bitcoin and how it would passively crowdfund and you know, you call that an ICO and how it would go through this whole process until it launched as an, a, as an open decentralized corporation what you call a DAO. I shared all my work with the founders of Bitcoin Magazine, Mihao Lisi specifically, who would go on to launch Ethereum, right? And prior to that, he would tell me before they launched that my work completed what they were working on, which was a stab in the heart because I was trying to recruit Elisi to come work for FoundUps. And um, I was so blown away by it that I pivoted and I went and did permaculture until the DAO was hacked. And that's for another story. But now, 23 years later, we have the AI. We can launch Eduit. And I invite you to be part of it. Go to eduit.org and help me usher in a dream that will change the world.